I guess after this episode of Loki, it's time to come clean with you guys and let you know my big secret. I too am a Loki variant. <laughs> Welcome to my safe Gaven. Thank you so much for joining me for another review on this channel. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this thing on my head because as I'm talking, I'm like, this is not that comfortable, but we're going to keep going. Maybe I just got to get used to it. But if you cannot tell from the title or this helmet that I'm wearing, we are here to talk about another episode of Loki. So we will be talking full on spoilers. So if you have not seen episode four of Loki, now's your time to dip or maybe you don't care about spoilers. So if you don't care about spoilers, welcome. But if you do and you're about to dip, please, before you go, hit that like button. And if you are staying, if you could still, please hit that like button. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this episode. Was this your favorite episode of the season so far? If it wasn't, what was your favorite episode of the season? What was your favorite moments in some of these episodes? Come on, let's get some discussion. Let's get some engagement because all of that stuff, including you hitting that like button, will help with the YouTube algorithm and pushing this video out there, pushing my channel out there so we can continue to grow. Let's get this channel to, as Buzz Lightyear was saying, the Toy Story movies to infinity and beyond. But yeah. Also, I wanted to address this before I talk and jump into the discussion of Loki episode 4, but as you guys know, I usually go live on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about the latest episode of Loki, but yesterday I didn't go live yesterday because honestly, I was so drained because I had just work, came home from work that morning, Wednesday morning, and I was so freaking drained that I was like, I don't have the energy to go live. Like, I just, I just can't. And so I asked Ron if he was available to go live today, Thursday, but he has to work so he's not available so he said what about friday so i was just like all right let's we can do friday so and then also partly i was like i kind of wanted to move it from wednesdays at seven o'clock because i was like the whole damn internet seems to go live at 7 7 p.m eastern standard time on wednesdays and you're competing with so many big youtubers and plus I've gotten people in the comments like, oh, I got to jump between your channel and somebody else's channel. So to give more people an opportunity, it also works that I don't know if it's going to be a permanent thing. And plus, there's also channels like Sharonda Pay Away. She goes live at 6 p.m. And I like watching her channel, I like supporting her and the black girl magic that she has on there with her and Fantastic Frankie, who's been on this show before. Definitely check them out if you're not already. Because, you know, I'm rooting for everybody black, especially some black girl magic. So, yeah, definitely check them out. So I don't know. This might be, depending on how it goes tomorrow, this might be a permanent thing, which is the day I used to do it anyway when Falcon and Winter Soldier and WandaVision were on Fridays. But yeah, so we'll see. So hopefully you join us tomorrow night, you know, because that's also part of me is like people go out on Friday night. So I don't know. Well, like I said, we'll see. This is a test run. This episode of Loki episode four and the Nexus event, once again, spoilers. This episode was crazy. I loved this episode, especially after the garbage that was episode three. I mean, I'm, I am over exaggerating a little bit. I don't think episode episode three was garbage but comparatively speaking it was definitely the weakest episode of the season so far and then when you jump to this episode yeah it pretty much by comparison was garbage and yeah i get you can't get this episode without what happened in episode three but at the same time i have absolutely no interest in watching episode three again but episodes one two and four i will totally watch them again and more than likely after this show is over i will watch them again i'll probably skip episode three because yeah that episode <laughs> But this episode was like firing on all cylinders and that's also kind of like, not a gripe, but I could kind of tell that they were kind of rushing through a lot of things in this episode because now this is episode four. We only have two episodes left because really nothing happened in the third episode. So now everything had to happen in this episode. And even though I did feel that while well, I was like, oh, it feels like they're just rushing through stuff, but I still enjoyed the hell out of it. So that's not even really a negative. It's just something that I felt and could tell because we're almost to the end of the season. But yeah, but this episode more or less confirms like they even though they keep kind of playing fast and loose of whether Sylvie is actually a Loki this episode does confirm that in some ways regardless of how she's categorized or whatever she is a version of Loki because you jump to her version of Asgard we see her in Asgard in the palace playing with toys 
days. And then all of a sudden the TVA just shows up on her and takes her from her home. And then they reset her timeline. And it just makes me go like, damn, like, where's Odin? Where's Thor? Where, like, as powerful as Odin is in the comics, I don't know. I feel like the TVA couldn't just wipe him out. And then, and then, I don't know if they talked about this much or maybe I just missed it. But when they say they reset the timeline, does that mean they just completely destroyed the timeline? Is everybody that Sylvie knows in her life just wiped out of existence? Like, how does that, how does that really work? But either way, they took this little kid out of her life and then jumping forward towards the end where Sylvie asked Ravona, what is it that she did that even made her a variant? And Ravona, like, if I was, if I was, if I was Sylvie at that moment, she would have caught some hands for me because she, she pissed me off. And I, like I said, I'm rooting for everybody black. But in that moment, Ravona, I wasn't rooting for Ravona then. Like, I would have gave her like a whop. Right there when she just looked at her. And I, you could tell. You know she was lying. When she looked at her, she was like, I don't even remember. She remembers. Like, she's been chasing this Loki for, like, hundreds of years. Because we don't, well, or maybe, whatever. We don't know how time works in the TVA. We assume it's hundreds of years she's been chasing this Loki. She knows exactly what she did to make her a variant. But she's just rubbing salt on the wound. And, yeah, I wanted Lady Loki to, like, whop her. Speaking of whopping, like, and I talked about this episode, my episode 3 review. But, like, how powerful is Loki like why is it that Sylvie and that's supposed to be the same version of Loki the only difference is Tom Hiddleston's version of Loki knows more magic than Sophia DiMartino's version of Loki but like and it seems like Loki's strength power and fighting ability just changes and fluctuates movie to movie scene to scene because like this is the same Loki that gave hands to Captain America in Avengers and the same Loki that gave hands obviously he eventually lost at some point but he fought Thor and I believe it was the first Thor movie and Thor struggled a little bit but then you get to this and he's struggling with some normal TVA agents and based on what we know now the TVA are just regular degular humans so he should not be struggling this much and then granted I know he can't use magic in the TVA but we literally saw him like put a whole building together and it's like he got hands, but yet they keep showing him getting his ass beat in this show. Like, this is his show, and I feel like he's taking a backseat to his own show. Not even just in his fighting capabilities and things like that, but just in the character development on the spotlight and everything like that. Like, I could tell, this is kind of the same problem I had with Black Widow, which I did review i uh, did a non-spoiler review for black widow if you're interested in checking that out click the link up here of course after this this review of course but and this is not i'm not going to talk spoilers but big, my one of my biggest problem with black widow is you could kind of tell that this movie was basically created to set up a new black widow and that's kind of the problem I have with Loki. Like, you could tell, like, this series, or at least that's how I'm feeling. Like, this series was basically created to just set up a new Loki taking over within the MCU. Whether it's Sylvie as Lady Loki or another character that I'm going to talk about later on that shows up. Or it might be both of them. We'll, who knows? But yeah, Ravona, she needed to get punched in the mouth. <laughs> but you know who didn't deserve to be punched in the mouth? And, and ah, it hurt my soul when this happened. When, when Mobius found out the truth that he was actually a variant and he confronted... And he confronted Ravona, and they pruned my dude. Like I was like, no, not like he's the best thing in this show. And I love his chemistry with Loki, and he was severely missed in episode three. And I was like, are you kidding? Like he, I need him to get his jet ski. But thankfully, when you get to the post credit scene of this episode, and you see, because Loki ended up being pruned, and when that happened, because I didn't know there was a post credit scene when I first saw this episode, because I've been checking for the first three episodes, and there wasn't a post credit scene, so I was like, maybe they're not doing it or whatever. So I turned it off after the episode was done. I was watching it when I was at work and then I just happened to check other people's videos on YouTube and I saw, oh shit, there was a post credit scene so I went back and watched it. But obviously... But let me backtrack a little bit. So when Loki actually was pruned, I thought, and I thought he was dead, I was hella hot. Cause again, the same problem, I, like I thought, I was like, so you really, you really gonna kill him again? Like, why am I watching this show? Like I was hella hot. <laughs> uh. Like, I was few, like, if a guest would have came to me at that time, because it was about to be breakfast time around it, I'd have been like, you ain't getting nothing. Loki's dead. I'm mad. <laughs> But based on that, I'm like, if Loki's still alive and he was pruned, Mobius has to still be alive, right? Like, where do they, like, I guess, and we'll find out next week, but I'm like, where do they go after they're pruned? So that must mean every single person that was ever pruned at the TVA is still alive. So C20 could still be alive if she was pruned. But I got to see my man Mobius come back and I got to see him get his jet ski at the end. Like, I had a theory that he was just another variant of Loki, but based on this episode and based on everything I'm getting, I'm assuming that's not the case. 
And also with that, Mobius dropped a couple Easter eggs on us that and things that we know are coming. He talked about the, how the TVA took out some Kree, which obviously we know from Captain Marvel. They took out Titans, and from some comic book lore, Titans are as a reference to the Eternals, because once upon a time, the Eternals lived on the moon of Saturn called Titan, so they call themselves Titans. Thanos is a Titan. He, if you remember from Avengers Infinity War, and he showed his planet and things like that, that was Titan, Saturn's moon. So that was an Eternals reference, and he mentioned vampires. So, and we already know that Blade is coming, so that was the first vampire reference within the MCU, and I'm just, it makes me think, like, where have vampires been, like, all this time? You mean to tell me Nick Fury, who knows basically everything that's going on in the Marvel world, he didn't think to reference, like, vampires, like, once? Like, how how did they hide vampires? It's the same problem, I'm like, how are they gonna introduce mutants in this world? Like, where, you you mean to tell me Charles Xavier is gonna, just is gonna sit down and do nothing while Thanos is attacked? Storm is gonna not help while Thanos is attacking? Like, yeah, so I'm gonna need them to really explain how they're gonna make vampires in this world. I personally thought, because in the comics, vampires were created by the Darkhold. We saw the Darkhold in WandaVision, so I thought maybe somehow Wanda created vampires throughout time and space or whatever. Like, it's a new creation within the Marvel Universe, but no, according to this, vampires currently exist. But that was an interesting drop. And speaking of interesting drops, a character that we haven't seen since Thor The Dark World because she got cast in another show, which I can't remember the name of the show, so she had scheduling conflicts, but Jamie Alexander returned as Lady Sif in like the most random of randomest cameos. So it also makes me wonder, now if she's back for Loki, does that mean we're gonna see her and find out where the character of Lady Sif was in Thor Ragnarok? Are we gonna see her in Thor Love and Thunder? I hope so. Lady Sif and Thor have a big relationship in the cut. Hell, they were together at one point when he wasn't with Jane Foster. And she's also one of the few remaining surviving as Guardian. So they have to address at some point where she's been. But yeah, it was cool to find, it was cool to see her in this time loop moment. Granted, it wasn't real, but still like, oh, Lady Sif, like that was, that was cool. It was random as hell, but it was cool. And then of course, we got to talk about the reveal. They actually showed the timekeepers. It's something I didn't think they were going to do. They, they were there. They spoke. They interacted with Loki and late and late and Sylvie. But then it turns out everything you thought was real is not real. Like what, what's, What's the name of that show that used to come on MTV, like MTV Diary or something like that? Man, I'm dating myself, but like the intro would be like, you think you know, but you have no idea. That's exactly what this episode and this moment was. You think you know, but you have no idea. It turns out the timekeeper, it's like the Wizard of Oz. They're fake. They're androids. Going back to Falcon and Winter Soldier, the big three, aliens, wizards, and androids. Or is it robots? Whatever. Same thing. So the big question is, who's ruling the TVA? Who created the TVA? And I, I know Kang the Conqueror is coming, but the more I'm seeing this show and the more I think about it, and yes, I know Ravona is in a relationship with Kang the Conqueror, but these Marvel shows specifically keep continuing to show that everything that you know from the comics, all your comic book knowledge is virtually irrelevant when it comes to these shows and it comes to the MCU. Because what's been the red herring really since the start of WandaVision? Mephisto, 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 Mephisto. But it's like, the more I think about it, like, I don't think Kang the Conqueror is going to be the creator of the TVA. Like, what is this show actually about? It's always about Loki variants of Loki. Sylvie's a variant of Loki. We get to the post credit scene. We see more variants of Loki. It's always about Loki. So, and part of me kind of doesn't want this to be the case, but depending on how they do it, I could see if it turns out to be that the person that created the TVA, the one behind it all, is the god of mischief himself. It is a variant, a much more evil variant, a much more sinister variant, a much more powerful variant of Loki himself. Again, I'm hoping that's not the case because I just feels like that's just diminishing and making your universe smaller. Which is the same problem I had with like the Infinity Stones, how everything was an Infinity Stone, like the Eye of Agamotto wasn't its own thing, it was an Infinity Stone. Like I feel like, I feel like that just makes the universe smaller. And so to make the founder of the TVA, just another Loki, I feel like that makes the universe small. And then it makes, it just brings up so many different questions. Like, how is it that a Loki, granted Loki's powerful, but he's not as powerful as like an Odin and things like that. So how did he become like master of time and space to the point that other beings are less powerful than him? The Infinity Stones don't work 
And he figured out a way to get those and have them not work in this realm. How did he create this realm? Like, we know our version of Loki, who's from Asgard, and even Sylvie, who is from her version of Asgard, even they're impressed by the power of the TVA. So if it's a variant of Loki, I'm like, how did you amass this much power? I don't know. I just don't. Again, they could do it and it could be great. But me, I'm just like, but I can see that this is the direction that they're going. Because like, again, everything goes back to Loki. And with that, speaking of everything going back to Loki, we get to the post credit scene at the very end. And what do we see? We see Kid Loki, who is a thing in the Young Avengers comics. We see an old man Loki, played by Richard E. Grant, wearing the more comic accurate outfit that he wore in like his original 60s, 70s, 80s run in the comics, but he's an older Loki. And then we see a black Loki who is apparently called Boastful Loki, and he's wielding what looks like a Thor-like hammer. I'm like, I, I need to learn more about all of these characters, more specifically him. And then also we see like a alligator crocodile Komodo dragon type of Loki because he's wearing the horns and I'm like what the hell is that the only one from the show or this post credit scene that's from the comics is old man Loki and kid Loki these other two Lokis nothing from their original concepts for this show so I'm very interested to learn more about them and going back to what I was saying earlier because kid Loki is a very prominent character within the comics and so is lady Loki I'm wondering if both of them are going to go on and survive past the MCU and Tom Hiddleston is going to pass the baton maybe after season two or maybe he won't maybe he's going to die after this season because there is a rumors that Loki is going to get a season two but maybe season two is going to be about the new Lokis because Kid Loki is a very prominent member of the Young Avengers and we know because they're teasing it because we got pretty much all of the characters so far except for like Hulkling and Iron Lad but we know Kang the Conqueror is coming so Iron Lad is just a younger version from the past of Kang the Conqueror so all we need is Hulkling and Iron Lad and we have the whole set for Young Avengers because now we got Kid Loki so Young Avengers is I mean it wouldn't make sense if Young Avengers is not coming like I said we have Hawkeye who's gonna Kate Bishop who's gonna be in the Hawkeye show Hawkeye needs to go to jail we have uh Cassie Lang, who is a uh, stature, who gets Ant-Man's powers. And uh, we have Wicked and Hulk. We have Billy and Tommy, who we've seen from WandaVision. And we know from the end of WandaVision, they're still alive somewhere. We know, Amer we know America Chavez is coming in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. We've seen Patriot in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's Isaiah Bradley's grandson. He eventually gets the Super Soldier Serum and becomes a Super Soldier. And then we also have Kid Loki. The only one we're missing from this equation would be Prodigy, who is a mutant and an X-Men character, but we don't have the X-Men in this universe yet, so they're definitely not going to do a Prodigy. But now all we're missing is Hulkling and Iron Lad. But yeah, I love this episode. This episode was fire. This wasn't my favorite episode of this. I would say my favorite episode is still episode one, but this episode is definitely up there. Episode three is on the bottom. Like, like, the epi episodes one, two, and four are like here. Episode three is like all the way, all the way down here. But yeah, like, I don't know. I I'll probably rate this episode a blockbuster. But the question is, again, what did you guys think about this episode of Loki? Again, is it your favorite episode? Which episode is your favorite? If it's not, let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you can, if this is one of your first time checking out one of my videos, please check out the other videos on my channel. And if you like what you see, please subscribe for more and hit that bell notification button so you're alerted. Every single time I post a new video. And please tell your friends, families, and neighbors about my channel. And again, yeah, as again, reminder, I will be going live 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow night, Friday, July 2nd, to talk about this episode of Loki with Ron. So be on the lookout and check that out. Hope to see you in the live stream. But yeah, if you could tell your friends, families, and neighbors about the live, about my channel, to help me continue to grow, I would greatly appreciate it. And I love you guys 3,000. And as always... I will catch you guys next time.